this will be my final video on just finding the area under a normal curve or the normal curve. Um, I've, I've found, uh, if you've watched some of my previous videos, I've found the area to the left of a z-score. I've found the area to the right of a z-score. But now we've got a different situation. We are finding the area, area under the curve that is between two z-scores. And the two z-scores that I have are a z-score of negative 1.5 and a z-score of positive 1.25. Once again, if you've been watching these videos, you should know that the z-score right in the middle of this bell-shaped normal distribution is zero. So if I draw a, a vertical line at these two z-scores, a z-score of negative 1.5 is going to be right about here. So I'll label that. And a z-score of positive 1.25 is going to be right about here. And I will label that positive 1.25. And I want to find the area between the two. So let's find the area. I'm going to go ahead and shade it. The area between these two z-scores. All right. Well, now I can go ahead and jump to my calculator. And... I am going to go second vars to get to my variables and my normal functions. And I'm going to use number two, normal CDF. If you've watched my other videos, you're familiar with this. And my two um, boundaries are negative 1.5 and positive 1.25. So let's go ahead and type those in. Negative 1.5 comma positive 1.25. Close my parentheses. And when I hit enter, it gives me the area between those two z-scores. So the area between the shaded region right here, the area between these two z-scores is 0.8275. I always like to go four decimal places when I'm finding the area under the curve. Now let me show you one more little thing about the calculator and finding the area under the curve. If for some reason you type in the left-hand boundary and the right-hand boundary backwards. So if I type in normal CDF for 1.25 comma and then put in negative 1.5 and I close my parentheses and hit enter, I end up getting negative 0.8275. Well, I always tell my students that the, the calculator is all, only as smart as the person who's using it. Okay, you've got to be smart enough to recognize that you cannot have a negative area or a negative probability if that's what you're trying to find. So if you accidentally type in the left-hand boundary second and the right-hand boundary first, like I did here, you're going to get the negative probability or the negative area and or I should say the opposite of that area. Well, as long as you recognize that these values are the same, you should be smart enough to say, oh, I typed them in backwards, so this should not be negative 0.8275, it should just be positive 0.8275. It's not like you have to redo the whole thing, just be smart enough to recognize that you typed them in the wrong direction.